Welcome to this episode of the Plan Disney Podcast, presented by State Farm. With State Farm, you can personalize your policy with options to help you find a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm your host, Amira Martin, and I'm a former Plan Disney panelist. On this episode, we are aboard the newest in the Disney Cruise Line ships, the Disney Wish. My panelist friends and I are gonna give you an overview of everything there is to see and do, as well as share some of our favorites and not to misses. Plus, we're gonna to speak to a member of the Walt Disney Imagineering team about how they brought the ship to life and to give us an inside scoop on all of the details. But first things first, let's meet our panelists for today. Ahoy! Ahoy, Ahoy there! there. <laughs> Adriana! Hi! It's so good to see you again! <laughs> Thank you! Now, for those of you who are new, Adriana was actually in two of our episodes, our very special May the 4th episode and our holidays episode where we chatted inside of the Haunted Mansion. So if you missed those two, be sure to go back and check out all of her wonderful advice. But Adriana, for our newer listeners, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? I would love to introduce myself. My name is Adriana. This is my first year on the Plan Disney panel. I live in Southern California with my husband and our two sailors. <laughs> and we've been cruising on the Disney Cruise Line since our youngest was three. Oh my gosh. And it's been six years now. So we've had a lot of amazing experiences together. And we have lots of different interests and things that we enjoy. But one thing we all agree is that we love taking vacations with the Disney Cruise Line. Oh. I love being on the panel because I get an opportunity to share some of my experiences and tips with guests that come to PlanDisney.com. And over at PlanDisney.com, guests can ask questions about their Disney vacations. So Disneyland, Walt Disney World mm -hmm. Resort, and of course, Disney Cruise Line. Guests can come and ask any question they have. And myself and fellow panelists will really do our best to answer any question that they do have. And also guests can search through previous questions that were asked right. to help them prepare for their trips. So it's just a joy to be here and to be doing that work as well. Oh my goodness. It's so great to be a panelist. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andrew, we need an introduction from you. Well, thank you for having me. I am Andrew. You may have heard me referred to as Plandrew. Um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to give yourself a nickname, but I did. Uh, just kind of rolled off the tongue. So I'm a husband and father. Our, my, my son is one year old and he's actually on his first vacation ever on this ship. Ever, ever. <laughs> so a it's a magical, one. it's a, setting the bar really high. Yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> I live in St. Louis in, in Missouri and uh, though we're landlocked, we have been sailing on Disney Cruise Line for the last 15 years, since I was 15 years old. Wow. And it's, <laughs> we've been on all four ships and now five. And I'll tell you, there's nothing like a Disney Cruise Line vacation. And I'm just, I'm just so overwhelmed to be here. It's just, this doesn't seem real. Right, it doesn't. It's like a dream. Like, can you even believe where we are right now? It's a wish come <laughs> it's true. Wish it come is a wish come true. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, now listen, we have a lot to cover, a ton to cover. So let's start from the beginning. What can guests expect when they board the Disney Wish? Well, the Disney Wish is the newest in the fleet but you can still experience all that guests have come to love when cruising with the Disney Cruise Line. So that includes rotational dining, mm -hmm. great character interactions, pirate night, pirate mm -hmm. night. fireworks, <laughs> uh, incredible service from crew members. Oh, the going, crew is just amazing. Yes, they're going to have an amazing time. So, so much to love and then some. Right, yes, I know, I love that. We get to experience so much just on one ship. Right. They make sure that we're going to have the best time while we're here. Now, we talked about kind of overall, you went over overall, but I know as soon as we walk in, there's just magic to be seen, right? Oh, Landry? there is. Oh my gosh. The Grand <laughs> Hall on the Disney Wish. It's the first entry to the ship and it's the same, in many ways, it's the same as the other ships where you get announced as you come in. And that just makes you, it feels real at that moment. It doesn't feel real until that happens. Right. And on the Disney Wish, you end up opening into the Grand Hall, which is just bright and gold and white and rich and just exciting. It's, it really is the, it feels, it looks like magic feels, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Like you Love walked that. into a castle. Right. It's just this elevated elegance. The theme is enchantment actually. Okay. And it really truly does feel enchanting. It's like this hub, this gateway to all the areas of the ship. And you're going to find that enchantment everywhere you go. 
But one of the things that I love in the Grand Hall is the the way that the ch space changes throughout the day. Right. So the lighting might appear different. Um, <laughs> It you really might, transforms you into this space. You might find that your favorite characters make an appearance, but a little bit off in the distance. Mm. So don't forget to look up. That's yes. all I'll say. Okay. Look up and don't miss. There's an opportunity at 10 p.m. and midnight. Okay. If you can stay up that late, <laughs> I would say don't miss it. Okay. Bring a loved one and come to the Grand Hall for 10 p.m. or midnight for an enchanting moment. All right, now, no spoilers. No spoilers, no we, spoilers. Are, we are team no spoilers right. here. Yes, and I appreciate that about both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spoil it, but tell me just enough. It's perfect. So Grand Hall is great. So we're gonna walk in and we're gonna see all that. But I feel like once we've gone through the Grand Hall, the next step is our stateroom. The stateroom is your home away from home. It really is. And on the Disney Wish, there are more staterooms more to love about the staterooms than ever. <laughs> there are actually 70% of the staterooms on this ship have verandas, which is more than ever before. So if you're a veranda person, you've got a lot to choose from. Yeah. But as you get into the staterooms, they're all beautifully appointed. They've got the things you come to expect, storage under the bed for as soon as your suitcase is unpacked, or if you like to live out of your suitcase on a cruise like we do, you just shove it under the bed and it's out of sight until you need it. Most staterooms have the split bath with, okay. if you're not familiar with that, it's actually, they. It's what it sounds like. You take a bathroom and you split it in half and put a sink in both sides. So one side has a toilet and a vanity. Mm -hmm. And then behind another door, there's a bathtub and a vanity as well. So you can really get a chance to split the family up while everybody's getting ready. You're not falling all over each That's other. perfect for my family of four. We've yes. been able to just enjoy the space and all get to use it at the same time. Yeah, and it's, it's something that my one-year-old, he loves the bath. And so having the bath in that one side it keeps us busy and somebody else can get right. the time to get ready. So for key it. for a little one to have that that bathtub available. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And yes, same. We have a family of five, so I feel you on Yes, that. it's spacious for all of us to use. And I think one thing that we need to mention is when you step on board for the first time, you will go to your stateroom and the keys will be outside the door in a sealed envelope. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how you'll enter your stateroom. And I think it's just such a great moment walking in because there are de different themes that you can find in yes. the staterooms. Yeah. Uh, mine is Moana themed and I'm very into that. And I know there's- <laughs> We were in a Moana themed room as well. Yeah, I know there's also Little Mermaid mm -hmm. and Cinderella. Mm -hmm. And uh, Princess and the Frog. Yes. And the Frog. So that's an exciting moment when you open the door and see what's behind it. And yes. opening the, it's a little something, but opening the key and pulling off that, that wrapping, it's like opening an invitation into your vacation. <laughs> yes, it that. is, it is. So, so roomy, I love that. And then I know there's also a key part where it takes care of the lights in the room. Yes, okay. yes. So right, right as you come into the room, you'll put a key card in and it mm -hmm. activates the lights in your stateroom. So you never forget to turn them off really. And then on the way out, you just take it out. Everything shuts off. No, nothing to worry about. That's brilliant. And there's like other real little factors of lighting in the room. That's key, right? Yeah. So something that I love, especially with my kids, if they need to use the bathroom in the middle of the night because they've been served chocolate milk in Shirley <laughs> Temple's nonstop at dinner. Uh, there's a nightlight mode in the game changer. Yeah, in the bathroom with the with the toilet. So mm -hmm. you can get in and not <laughs> disturb the rest of your family that's slumbering so peacefully in those comfortable beds. And can't forget the added number of outlets and USB chargers in the room. It's it's You'll never have to forget a brick ever again. You yeah, can never. just plug right in. It's we fantastic. Enough, yes, sure. everywhere, which is so nice. We have the Murphy bed in our room. Mm -hmm. It's that deluxe family. Mm -hmm. Ocean view with yes, veranda. That version of the room. So even in the little side of the Murphy bed, there are outlets for my teenager. He's oh, loving that is that. clever. That's awesome. He's loving that right <laughs> That's now. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so we talked all about where we're going to sleep. I think we need to talk about, where, where are we gonna eat? Oh, oh there, there's food on a cruise ship. There is? There is food on the Disney cruise ship. And not only is there food, there's food and entertainment. And that is what I love. We had dinner at Worlds of Marvel the first mm -hmm. night of our sailing and just had this fun opportunity to really step into that story and be a superhero. Right. And again, no spoilers. No spo <laughs> Something that I do love though is that um, on the kids menu, there was a little overview of some of the characters you're going to encounter throughout the throughout your dining experience. Mm -hmm. So my daughter that hadn't watched the movies could read up a little bit about, you know, who she might see. And That's she so felt smart. prepared for that moment. Right. So right. it's great for for everyone, even if you haven't seen the films. Yes, that's so great. I love that they do that. So that way nobody feels lost 
and it's just so interactive. We have the same schedule for our dining. So. We do. So what did you order for dinner that night at Worlds of Marvel? So I got the pasta with the scallops, which was fantastic. Um, and then my husband got, I think there's a ribeye steak, mm. which he absolutely loves. So, but I know we're, let's talk a little bit more about food. Yeah. So we had the steamed bao buns uh, for an appetizer. Uh, the kids love those. I got a lamb shawarma salad because mm. if lamb is on the menu, I cannot resist. So appropriate shawarma and, and that, that yeah. dining room, right? Yes. So also uh, there's, of course, dessert. Every meal ends with dessert. And we enjoyed the Pim Donut Sunday with a little mini donut yes. on top. Yes. And no spoilers, no spoilers, Andrew. Of course. We'll let, let that one go. I'll just say that they focus on Pim technology or the oh. technology that Avengers use. We'll just leave it at that. You're going to have a good time Oh, tonight. we eat there tonight. I can't <laughs> wait. I think we need to talk about there are more your, dining current, oh my yes, goodness. your current the, favorite. The rotational dining experience is great because you get to experience all of these. So no worries about missing out. Right. But... My first dining rotation with my family was at Arendelle. Oh my goodness. Like I said, I have a one-year-old. I have never seen, we, this is his first trip and we walked into Arendelle and it feels like you're transported just to a banquet hall where you're celebrating Christoph and Anna's en engagement. Yes. And it's just so magical from the moment you walk in. The portraits as you're walking in, I couldn't stop myself from saying, hang in there, Joan. When we... <laughs> As soon as we passed her. Definitely gives a nod to the Frozen films that we love. Yes. yes. And when we sat down, the ambiance started right away. The musicians. Oh, the musicians. I know we're talking about food, but I can't, I can't stop from talking about everything you experience as you come in. The food follows the amazing musicians. They welcome you in. They tell you what's going to happen. And they really make you feel like you're a celebrant in all of this. And so when it came time to order, we sat down. And let me tell you, the Honest Cult Board, which if you're not if you're not up on your Nordic terminology, <laughs> all of the food is Nordic inspired. Yes. And so it was smoked salmon, things fresh from the sea. It really felt like eating that lyric, the where the north wind meets the sea. It was so exciting. And then uh, the I think the craziest thing was watching people who ordered the baked the baked scallops. Oh yes, yes. We thought it was just baked scallops, but it, we start seeing these being carried through the dining hall. And it's just this pastry covered in this, this pastry covered bowl with this beautiful scallop inside. It's these. We watched people walking down carrying that. And I was like, wait, I ordered the big scallops. Can I get one of those? <laughs> and it was it that. Was. And it was delicious oh, every bite. Delicious. And for main course, I had the Chilean sea bass. And again, I'm a fish guy. So that it was cooked so perfectly. I've never tasted anything like it. It was delicious. Yeah. I highly recommend that dish. And dessert? Just, just order everything. There's, you, you can't go wrong. And <laughs> yeah. the, the, the lingonberries and the cheesecake and everything, it, it really felt like we were just part of the celebration through the entire meal. Yeah. Right. And the entertainment was incredible. Oh my goodness. That violin player rips. Oh. Like, and, there, and I will say again, team no spoilers, but there's a broman. And just be ready for it. <laughs> yes. It's good. It's, it's good. It's a good one. It totally is a good one. And yes, the entertainment was so wonderful and so unexpected. I, I loved every moment. And I know that we've mentioned rotational dining, but I'm not sure that we've said what it is. Yeah. So I think that guests need to know that when they're on the Disney cruise ship, they have a dining rotation. Mm -hmm. So that means that your, so your serving team comes with you. So you get to enjoy each of these restaurants. Uh, throughout the cruise vacation. Right. And there's one that I haven't been able to enjoy yet that I'm looking forward to tonight. <laughs> Both Amira and I are on the same I schedule. Know. We're oh so excited. Tell us more about 1923. Uh, 1923, taking it back to the year the Walt Disney Company was started, right? And let me tell you, it's like the Brown Derby eight animators palette. Like it literally <laughs> feels like the two came together in the perfect way. You're walking in and there's just all this rich artwork. There's like 900 artwork pieces of art or something in the, in the, cases as you're walking through and all the servers are dressed in this beautiful California inspired high end dining. It really feels almost like a and I know we'll talk more about adult exclusive dining later, but it feels like a little, you know, a little date night that you could have if your kids decide to go and just be off in the kids clubs, right. which we'll also talk about later. But. I love that it honors the golden age of animation. Oh, really? And just kind of makes you feel like that elevated California cuisine. That's what I'm looking forward to. Oh, and you're going to love it. I hear there's filet mignon on yes. the menu. Tell us about the I'm ordering that tonight. Yeah. So, we need to know all the details. Again, my wife and I, we just split the menu. She ordered half, basically, and I ordered the other half. It was <laughs> an amazing thing. And you can do that on a Disney cruise, which is amazing. So I ordered for my appetizer the burrata. 
and then also a uh, duck confit pastilla, which it basically tasted like a funnel cake wrapped around a duck breast and it was just delicious yeah um and then for our we skipped the salad course because we had so many appetizers <laughs> uh and then for the main i ordered the filet and it was delicious and i couldn't decide whether i wanted the filet or the lamb so i asked my server and he said oh we'll bring a side of lamb i will be ordering okay. a side of lamb that was a good tip and you know the crew members are so accommodating your oh, yeah. dining service team wants you to have a great experience so you need to tell them if there's something that you love yeah. and they will just, they'll, they'll take care of I'll you. I'll tell you that yeah. second rotation, there was already a drink waiting for me that our, our friends, our newest family members showed us say were they know me already. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that they come with us. That's yeah. a real good part. Of if actually only they could come with us. Let's, just come home with Let's us not too. talk about yeah. it. Too <laughs> <Arcadian>. <laughs> All right. Now we talked about the rotational dining, but there are other ways that we can partake in some more food delight of on course. board. Of course, you will never go hungry. Never. <laughs> so there is Marceline's Market, and that is more of a buffet style, mm -hmm. open for breakfast and lunch. And you can see the open times on the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. That's where to go to see what's open and when. Uh, Great op options, lots of variety. Lots of variety. I love that. They have a kids. They have a kids section where the counter is actually low enough for them to see what's yes. there, and it just it just made my heart sing seeing that <laughs> because my son can basically toddle around. He can barely see the buffet. So he's just being able to see what's coming his way, AKA Mickey waffles. <laughs> <laughs> There's also on board Joyful Sweets, which is inspired by the Pixar film. So this is a place for a nominal fee. You can go get some gelato, mm. ice cream. They have plant-based ice creams, mm. tons of topping options, and this adorable signature sundae, a bing bong signature sundae <sighs> with uh, lots of options you can choose from. And it's served in this adorable Mickey ear hat that's okay. like themed to bing bong. So very cute. Who's your friend who likes to play and eat ice cream? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Not it's to me. miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. But one of my favorite places to eat for lunchtime mm -hmm. is the Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a bunch of different options you can choose from. There's Donald's Cantina. You can build your own burrito, bowl, or taco. My son has been there every day. And they give you big scoops of guacamole if you ask for it. And tons of hot sauce oh, options. Excellent. Nice. So good. There's Mickey's Smokestack Barbecue. Mm. It's got some great meat options. I'm a St. Louis guy. We know barbecue. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it hits the bill. And my daughter could live on mac and cheese if I let her. And she loved the mac and cheese there as a Those side. Sides. And they have sweet potato fries as well, which is one of my favorites. So mm -hmm. don't miss that. Even if you just want to grab the sides and get something else, you can visit all of these. They're all really close yeah, by. Yeah, Goofy's yes. Grill is a great place to pick up a plant-based sausage just real quick or a burger or anything you like. They have, the, they have other plant-based options as well. So it's oh. a real place to swing by. And when you pass it, you might see the ice cream station. Oh, too. Yes, but wait, you can't miss the chicken tenders are also at Goofy's. That's yes. right, that's right. Yeah, yes. did we cover the pizza? Yes, there's also Daisy's Pizza Pies, which my children will attest. They come regularly and have a slice of pizza. They're fresh, they're making them all day long. Yeah, so I've only too. seen them, you know, with the cheese melting and the cheese pulling and yes. it's delicious. And you cannot miss Minnie's Sweet Ice Cream. And you know, I know, Amira, you saw my daughter more than I did yesterday. I mean, every time I touch, she's my new buddy. Every time I turn around, I'm like, hi. She's like, hi. And what was she doing? Ice cream. Every she time. was getting the ice In her cream. Hands. Every yep. time. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's, it's incredible. And you know, something that I love too, we have a family tradition. We go and get the soft serve late at night as check the hours and see how late it's open. Mm -hmm. But we go in right before closing and we get a soft serve ice cream and we go sit in front of the funnel vision, that big screen in front of the pool area. And we toast to a Disney cruise vacation and all the memories that we shared. And oh to the next gosh. ones. And to and the, to next, the next, one. next ones. That's right. I love that. That's <laughs> wonderful. Now, let's talk a little bit more about upper deck stuff since, you know, that's part of your tradition anyway. Let's let's dive into that. What are some of the things that guests can expect to see on the upper decks of the wish? Yeah. So there's these pools. And I'll tell you, there, I've never seen so many pools on a on the decks of a Disney Cruise Line ship. It is they're terraced in almost the stadium seating. There's six of them in the one main area, and then there's a little hidden one. Just be on the lookout for it. And then there's that I haven't seen even yet. I know we have There are it. so many, right? And so it's everybody's got a great view of funnel vision. And everybody has a great view of the stage when they're doing things on the stage. And there's some of them are shallower where you can just kind of put your feet in and have a nice time, just stay a little cool in the sun, like today. Yeah. And then. Other ones are a little deeper if you feel like taking a real dip. 
So Andrew, I want to know a little bit more about pool time with a little one. Yeah, so there's a place made just for toddlers on the Disney Wish. It's Toy Story Splash Zone. And let me tell you, it has unlocked some core memories. I know that's a, that's a different film, but it really has. My one-year-old has had the most amazing time playing around in a little splash pad area with Buzz and Woody and Jesse. And there's even a bullseye rubber ducky. And he walked towards it, and I have that is burned into my mind as something I will never forget him. Just letting him get, he, and he's letting himself get obliterated by these water jets. And it's so <laughs> funny, and he's not having a single issue with it. Well, it's not just the little ones that have the spaces on board to enjoy mm -hmm. for 38 inches and above. And that's actually pretty, like three year olds could be 38 inches yeah. tall. There is a Slidosaurus Rex, and it is themed to my favorite Pixar short the uh, party source oh, Rex. Yeah. And there's that moment when he's like, what up, fishes? That is just <laughs> the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in a Pixar short. And this whole area has stadium seating for the parents to keep an eye on their kids. So if they're at that three-year-old area that they're still wanting to play in the splash pad, they can just let them go. Yeah, right. and they yes. can see them, yeah. which is really nice. And that slide that you know, is good for the, the ones that are ready to start sliding down. It's not too fast. Oh yeah, my wife went on it. She said it was totally great. It's a great middle ground before, I think what we're gonna wanna talk yes. about next. Yes, oh boy. Aqua Mouse. <laughs> yes. Oh, Aqua Mouse. I mean, it, if you like the Aqueduct and you like attract Disney attractions, what better than a Disney attraction at sea? The first Disney attraction at sea. Right. And let me tell you, the, the I love the Mickey Mouse shorts, the new Mickey Mouse shorts. Funny. Yeah, they are so funny. You're, you get to be a part of one. And again, team no spoilers, but lots of fun on the way up, lots of fun on the way down. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's something that's important to note is that it's for 48 inches. The height requirement is 48 inches um, for those who want to ride single rider mm -hmm. um, and 42 inches and above. And I think during our cruise, it was mostly just two people per ride. Right. Um, and if you do have kids that want to ride together, if your little one is younger than seven, they do need to ride with somebody that's 14 or, 14 older. or older. So keep that in mind when your kids are getting excited to ride the Aqua Mouse so that you plan appropriately and everyone can can enjoy it. Or get ready to put on your suit and do it yourself. That's right. <laughs> Go on and do it. Double up and get it done because but, it is an experience. It, it, is. <laughs> it is. And if you're ready to not have an experience with your children. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of space, spaces for adults to escape on the top deck, uh, back at the Quiet Cove area. It is amazing. It is, uh, there's an infinity edge pool right off the, after the ship that you can just see for miles and miles. It feels like you're swimming in the ocean safely. <laughs> <laughs> and the Cove Cafe is still there. It's a favorite. You, they still do the coffee cards. You can go and get your specialty coffees, some cocktails and some little treats throughout the day. So it's, it's still there and the cushioned loungers. Oh, yes, let me they're tell you. so comfy. And there's also an area, like I don't love to wash my hair constantly. So there's a nice area that you can sit and just be in the water. And if you don't want to be in the infinity pool, so you yeah. can kind of get wet, cool off um, and just relax back there. And the, there's a lot, little bar back there as well. So if you want a cocktail and just be in that shallow pool, I don't like washing my hair either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know Andrew's in the same boat, I yeah. think, as us. We same don't want to wash our hair. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. A big ship. Now, I love that the adults have a space just in a pool area, but there are other adult spaces that we can enjoy on board. Should we talk a little bit more about those spaces too? Absolutely. Uh, there are some restaurants that are an additional experience if you would like to reserve them for yourself. Paulo Steakhouse and Enchante. Paulo has always been a tradition for my husband and I. We like to book brunch mm. and enjoy that. But there's this opportunity to go and have a date night. Um, and something that I love, Belle is my favorite princess because she's seeking adventure in the great wide somewhere. I just love that about her. And these are actually themed to Beauty and the Beast. You know, some subtle nods, yes, some beautiful, more, elegant details. Very elegant, more like the, the live action Beauty and the Beast, which you enter this area and you walk down this hallway and it's just bordered by portraits of Cogsworth and Lumiere in their transformed forms. And then you get to the end and the rose is sitting there under the bell glass. And it's just, that's a welcome. And you take a right and it opens up into this bar, the rose, which has beautiful, beautiful appointments and huge windows off one of the sides of the ship. And it's just a really great place to go. And you don't have to go, you don't have to have a dinner at Palo or Enchante. 
to go there. You can yeah. use it as a lounge like you would on any other ship. There are so many lounges on board. Oh, so oh, gosh. many. So many. Yeah. Uh, one of the ones that I enjoyed the, on the first day was Keg and Compass, mm -hmm. and that's more like a pub. Something that I noticed about the details that you find on the ship, there are USB ports. So you can go in there and plug your phone in, maybe watch a game. There's mm -hmm. also purse hooks if you have a bag. And I found that all over the ship, yeah. really. There are lots of USB ports for those of us that maybe need some juice because we've been I'm, filming and taking lots of pictures right. of all those memories we're making. I am team making. low battery warning constantly. <laughs> all so. the time, right? So you don't have to pack your extra battery in your bag, right. which is really nice. And yeah. Speaking of the lounges, they are themed so beautifully. Yes. Uh, the Bayou Ugh. is inspired by Princess and the Frog. Yes. There's live entertainment in there. Mm -hmm. You have to look up. I mean, you just, yeah. you're oh, in this goodness. enchanted space. Yeah. You can order beignets yes. and drinks and live entertainment. They were, the live entertainment when I was there was just off the charts, amazing. It, it's so amazing. It's so, and you never know what you're going to get as you're walking over to that space, which is why I've, it's my current personal favorite. I will put that out there. I love the Bayou. But I, we have other places as well, right? Yes. And everywhere you go, you're stepping into a story. And at Nightingale's mm -hmm. Piano Bar, you're stepping into Cinderella's story right off the Grand Hall. You know, there's a moment in the Cinderella film where Drizella sings, sing sweet nightingale. Sing sweet nightingale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you cringe a bit. And then Cinderella takes over with her it's beautiful so voice, yeah. right? But this space is inspired by that moment. There are bubbles. The fixtures look like bubbles. <sighs> the notes of the song, uh, the drinks. The drinks. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The drinks. They have bubbles that not if you've ever been to Oga's Cantina at uh, in any of the parks and the bubbles just open in a puff of smoke yes. but there's also ice bubbles which if you want to channel your inner yzma and like smash it with a hammer you do <laughs> and the drink goes everywhere but it's all part of the show and they even have their signature drink the sweet nightingale which is served i don't know how they do it in a nightingale shaped glass yeah <laughs> it's it's beautiful worth stepping into and some great piano entertainment as well yeah ama amazing players and not too far from that you can push a button enter a door and go into a galaxy far, far away mm -hmm. at the Hyperspace Lounge. And this place, <laughs> oh. you, you're transported, literally, the moment you step in. Off and world. It, yes, it's just fantastic. Something I'm excited about, we have reservations today. We made reservations the first day we got mm -hmm. on the ship. We were able to make those on board. Okay. And uh, we, if you make reservations before 8 p.m., you can bring children with you. So I can't wait to order some non-alcoholic drinks for mm -hmm. my kids and just enjoy that space i cannot wait for them to push that button and oh walk my gosh in. that just... sound it just it literally transports you and then being able to see all the different places on the viewport that you can jet off to through hyperspace is pretty impressive yeah right. that's so cool now so you're saying a good tip is to make sure we make that reservation yeah that so important? that's something that you want to see it is an intimate space to really keep that feel, the feel of you know, that you're in this exclusive lounge yes. in the Star Wars galaxy. Keep your back to the wall. Keep that's your right. eyes out. Like, right. make sure you know who's there. <laughs> exactly. So I would recommend if that's on your list, uh, go early in the day on embarkation day and make a reservation. I yeah, can't oh talk goodness. all built spaces without spa. We haven't even I know. talked I was about, just about census to say. spa. There's just so we much to There's touch so on. Much. And it's so crazy that everybody thinks Disney Cruise, is it, is it all for the kids? No, there is so much for the adults, especially with the spa. It's a bigger space than ever. It's down on deck five now. And it's... I couldn't believe how big it is walking through it. There's and the rainforest room is bigger, and all of these things are uh, you know an additional experience, but one you're gonna want to make time for. Oh, yeah, especially. there's an outside space to the rainforest uh, spa area now that is just really relaxing, so tranquil. I stepped over there the other day, and everyone looked like they were napping. I mean, I didn't. <laughs> I just wanted to tiptoe through it, you know. Yeah, put on a little extra sunscreen, be back there, and it's it's just so serene. Yeah, and there's plenty of shade, too. Plenty of shade, too. So like the salon I hear used to be something that was near the spa, and it's that's different here on The Wish. How does that work here? Right, so all of the spa experiences on board are an additional experience if you'd like to book those. But in, on the other ships in the fleet, the salon was next to it. Well, now they have their own spaces on board and they're so charming. There's the untangled salon that is very similar or that um, evokes the feeling of Rapunzel's day where she has all the um, braids in her yes. hair and the flowers. flowers yeah. There's so many beautiful details in that. And then there's a barber shop oh, on board. Oh, Hook's Barbary. Let me tell you about a spot. There's that scene in Peter Pan where he's getting shaved and it ends up being the duck, like Smee is like <laughs> shaving a seagull basically. Yes. So 
take that and put it into a real classy joint with a hidden bar. Now, your husband was, I think he saw, I yeah, think he saw so him over there. We passed by Hook's Barbary and he said, I need to go in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool, inviting space. It's like deep, rich woods and makes you feel like it could be on the captain's quarters of a ship. Totally. And you can have an old fashioned while you get a haircut. Mm. It's like the best of both worlds. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I feel like we've talked about all the things that adults can do. Let's talk about those kids. Let's talk about the kids clubs that are available yes, on where, board. Where are the kids when we're having these adult experiences? <laughs> Somewhere. They can't get off the ship. <laughs> now, one thing is that there's a nursery. And I know you were so impressed with the nursery. Oh Andrew. my gosh. Tell us a little the, bit more about it. It's a small world nursery. It lives up to its name. It is a small world for the smallest sailors. Oh. And it is so adorable. It's magical. It's interactive. They have such like tactile things for them to interact with and little magical clock faces that everybody knows from it's a small world. Just, but if you rotate them like they rotate on the buildings, some magic really does happen and it activates things and it's oh. not it's not overwhelming for the littlest kids it's something very soft and inviting and it it reminds me of just a place i would want to take my kid it's just so comforting to know that there's a place like that for the littlest sailors yeah it's yeah. beautiful it's so great now but your kids are a little bit older mine are older <laughs> they are older and I have to tell you that one of the first things we all wanted to do all of us me included when we heard about the disney wish there is a slide from the grand hall that slides down into Disney's Oceaneer Club. And I, we got on board on day one and I was like, excuse me, can I slide on this please? And you can on day, on day one, one. Day yeah. one. Okay. during the open house, adults can do it. But after that, it's kids only. Kids only. And they will just be like, bye mom, bye And dad. then disappear down a deck. Disappear. And the spaces down in there are so incredible. There is Fairy Tale Hall where there's Bell's Library for story time. There's Arts and Crafts Studio inspired by Rapunzel from Tangled, where the kids can do crafts together. There's Anna and Elsa's Summer House with an interactive frozen game. They can tap their band to the screen and play games where it's motion tracking and oh, they're throwing cool. snowballs. Oh and gosh. I heard it saves your progress. So my daughter really enjoyed that part as well. It's awesome. And there's actually a new space as well. It's Mickey and Minnie's Captain's Deck. Oh my gosh, this has a little play, low play area for them to climb and slide through tunnels and things like that. Everything is ships themed. You can get behind the helm of a virtual ship and push all the buttons and make all the sounds that a ship makes. And there's even soft places, soft big, <laughs> I was laughing, my son during open house was standing in one of the big life preserver shaped rings on the ground and just standing in it. He had this big smile on his face Aww. like he was having the best time in the world. And there's, there's a couple of little magical spots like there always are where you can talk to a funnel kind of like these yellow ones behind us here and you might hear captain mickey and captain minnie just talk back <gasps> oh, oh that's gosh, really awesome that's adorable. i love that and you know oceaneer club is for guests ages 3 to 12. Mm -hmm. uh, adults can view these spaces during open house times and one of my daughter's favorite spaces was the imagineering space mm -hmm. the walt disney imagineering lab wow where she was able to make her own ride in the ride studio oh, man. and name it. I think it was Screamer Mountain. <laughs> if I got that wrong, she's going to tell me, but I think that was it. And you get to design it and then enjoy it too. So and it's a scaled down version of the technology that the Imagineers actually use when they're developing rides. So if you've got a, a kid who's just an Imagineer in training, they're going to love that space. I think it might inspire some children to be Imagineers and trainers because, yeah. because of how beautiful it is and interactive and just, and we have to talk about the Star Wars cargo bay area. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> We're Star Wars fans. My yeah. daughter loves Star Wars and she loves creatures. And mm. there's an opportunity to be a creature caretaker on board. There are porgs, a loft cat. <laughs> I mean, like kids heaven in there. Oh yeah. It makes me want to be a child again. I know. Like, please, can we swap places? I just want to play in there forever. Freaky Friday would be a great thing to happen while you're on a Disney <laughs> <Yeah>. cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so we got Star Wars, we got Fairy Tale Hall, but I know that there is a really cool space that is also available inside the Oceaneer Club. Marvel, Marvel Superhero, Superhero Academy. Academy. There we go. Oh my gosh, this space. Uh, let me tell you, talk about wanting to build a time machine and find yourself as a kid again. 
this place is all about inspiring the next generation of superheroes in real life because by giving them this inspiration of superheroes that we all know and love. Right. And so there's you can create your own super suit and have it be take it to an interactive activity where you can fight off the bad guys. And while you're in there, you're also getting advice from, you know, scientists from Wakanda in things like the challenge of the taskmaster. These scientists from Wakanda are coming and telling you about what you need to do, the logic problems, the puzzles that you need to solve in a very short amount of time so that this technology doesn't fall into the wrong hands. The, the inspiration you feel from it is just amazing. And that this is translating into superheroes in real life by showing them what superheroes can be for us in, in the films we love. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So even when they're that little, you can kind of get them inspired by that. Yeah. Now, it's not just for the little kids. So we had three to 12. Let's talk about the other spaces that are available. Yes, well, my son is in the 11 to 14 year old age range. And for him, he can go to Edge. And he told me they have an excellent selection of games and different kinds of game consoles. But it's not just video games. I said, please do some other things as well. <laughs> and they do. They have some amazing crew members in there that are leading activities, playing other types of games. Uh, there's learn to draw, different oh. things that are programmed throughout the day that you can also see in the Navigator app on board. And something that he loves is they have a little soda area just for the kids. Mm -hmm. No adults allowed in there, <laughs> just for the kids to enjoy. And, you know, something that I recognize is that the crew members make this space. They really do. Yes. There, there was one of the crew members chatting with a, a tween in there, and I had no idea what they were talking about. So they're all cooler than me, <laughs> and my kid wants to hang out with them, and I am more than happy to have that happen because I get alone time. He has a great time. We all come together at some point in the day, and we've made some wonderful memories. Oh, I love that. There's also a space for the 14 to 17 year olds mm -hmm. as well. And do you have anyone in that age range? I have a 17, he freshly 17. <laughs> Congratulations. So, thank you. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <you're getting> so <laughs> old. Yeah. So um, he has been loving that space. It's that that's the vibe, right? It's vibe. Yes. I forget what they actually have in there. So they also have games and okay. opportunities to hang out. Mm -hmm. I think they've got a smoothie bar. And I really love the 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 way that they break up the age differentiation, because I know my 11 year old is happier playing, you know, with the 14s and under. And right. The older kids want to feel like they're with their group too. So it's a nice distinction as well. Now, is there anything else we need to talk about in terms of like entertainment yes. on board? Oh, yeah. So obviously the kids are entertained in their kids club, but all together as a family, are there some entertainment must do's on board of the wish? Absolutely. So. It kicks right off on Embarkation Day with Set Sail on a Wish, a brand new embar a brand new sail away party. And I mean, what else can you say? Again, team no spoilers. You want to tell everything, but you just can't. <laughs> Lots of characters will say that. Lots okay, of characters, that's more than ever. And then uh, there's just something about the entertainment on board and the spaces that you can find as a family. Like Luna is an amazing space just off Keg and Compass, just off the Grand Hall. It's a two-story space where you can come and see game shows and have a nice place to sit and just laugh your heads off. I mean, my sides still hurt. We the, the cast, the crew members are so amazing at making fun for the entire family. And Luna's really great because if you know D Lounge from the other ships, mm -hmm. it's now it's like that, but two stories and a balcony. And so if you're like me, who tends to run behind on his, you know, checking his navigator app and you want to make him kind of creep in the back door somewhere. There is a second level where you can sit in the balcony. Again, USB chargers everywhere. Something where you can just sit in, recharge in more ways than one and just have a really great time as a family. Yeah. And something we love about cruising with the Disney Cruise Line are the Broadway style shows mm. that they offer. And the Disney Wish does not disappoint. The Seize the Adventure show on day one was amazing. Maybe one of my favorite shows ever. Yeah. I mean, it was all the songs I wanted to hear and characters I wanted to see. Right. It's just with a really heartfelt storyline that yeah. I think definitely do not miss it. And you won't have to miss it because there are two show times offered for all of these Broadway style shows. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the main dining seating, you go to dinner and then you watch your show. Mm -hmm. If you have the later dining, you begin your evening with the show and then end with dinner. Yeah, so it's dinner and a show or show and dinner. You're not you're not going to miss it either way. Either way, it's a win. And that, <laughs> that show, I'll tell you, just Goofy, the, the heartwarming story of Goofy wanting to see if he could has, has what it takes to be captain. Aww. Like I, as a father, you want those things for your kids. You want them to dream and have that and wish. And watching those shows, it just comes alive. Yeah. And it's amazing. 
There's also the Little Mermaid that's showing on the Disney Wish and the, the entertainment is just got top notch. So definitely put that on your calendar and something else not to miss. The Pirates Rock and Parlay oh. party was last night yes. and we rocked the boat. It we was did. so good. And as you exit the Pirates Parlay party, if you're on the starboard side of the ship, and if you're on one of the lower decks with a, either Ocean View or Ocean View with Veranda, you can actually see the fireworks from your stateroom from inside through the window. And it was a really great way to experience that and not feel like we missed out, especially with a one-year-old who should be sleeping by the time right. that party is over. Right. <laughs> and it's something I love about the Disney parks and you feel it on the sea. Yeah. It's yes. great. It's so great. Now, let's dive a little bit into the actual pirate party because this one, it rocks a little bit, right? Oh, it rocks hard. <laughs> there is good music. You'll be stomping your feet, clapping, singing along. I think it appeals to guests of all ages and their music taste. Um, I loved the the lead pirate yes. and her voice. She just Carried killed in. it. It yeah. was so good. So get ready to go and party hard like a pirate. That's so fun. Okay. Whew. We've talked about a lot, I but think. But wait, there's more, There right? is more, <laughs> because we haven't even touched on the cinemas yet. Oh my goodness. These, these spaces. These are some of my favorite spaces on the ship, actually, because of the detail. Oh yeah. And you can go and you can watch some of your favorite Disney classics or first run movies mm -hmm. in these spaces. They're completely themed to either Wonderland or Neverland. Okay. And I've got a hot date there tonight <gasps> to watch the latest Thor Love and Thunder movie. So I can't wait. I'm going to be up late watching. I know you have a hot date tonight. I do. But what other activities are available? What, what else should we be talking about here? I know there's so much more. There is. And I kind of feel like I've presented myself as a terrible mother because I've been like, bye kids, bye kids, go have a great time. Um, we also have good times as a family. Yes. And the Hero Zone is a space where you can go with your family. It's indoors. There's a basketball court, table tennis, foosball, lots of interactive games you can play. And they also have a time of day that they do in credit games where it's like this giant inflatable, inflatable mm -hmm. obstacle course. My kids race through that totally 100% fueled on ice cream okay. mm -hmm. and just blasted through that thing and had <laughs> the best time. And it's it's a fun spot to go with your family to enjoy together. Yeah, and I love that. Character interactions all over the ship too. You'll walk through a space and there's your favorite character or there's six of your favorite characters <laughs> on the way to another place. And it's so amazing. You'll see Goofy walking around. You'll see so many of the big friends that we've always come to know and love. And there's opportunities in the Grand Hall to yes. have photos <laughs> taken with your favorite characters. And there, it just seems like it's all over the place. The mm -hmm. magic really is everywhere on the Disney Wish. And there's a new ad adventure called Disney Uncharted Adventure, where the magic is everywhere. Okay. So you can play that in your app and go and explore and interact in this magical experience that we haven't before had on a Disney cruise ship. It takes the midship detective agency from the dream and fantasy to another level, to, to pulls it a little bit into our world too. Oh, wow. So fans of that, look out. Yep, look this out. is what they want to do. Oh, oh my gosh. I, we went through so much, there's so much, but we haven't talked about setting sail. I think we need to talk a little bit more about that. So Andrew, let's hop into that. Yeah. The Disney Wish sails from Port Canaveral, so you're going to have to come to Florida anyway. So maybe you'll tack on a little bit of a Walt Disney World Resort vacation. Uh, but even if you don't, we sail out of Port. This ship sails out of Port Canaveral, mm -hmm. and on three and four night itineraries okay. to the Bahamas and uh, Disney's private island, Castaway Key, which is right behind us. And I still can't <laughs> believe that. I keep looking over at my shoulder. I'm like. We're at Castaway Key right now. Yes, and it sails all year long to Castaway Key, which is a great destination any time of year. I've been here in December, in May, throughout the year. And I love to take advantage of some of the special themed sailings that the Disney Cruise Line offers. Mm -hmm. Halloween on the high seas, oh, gosh, love voyage it. that I love so much. That's here on the Disney Wish in the fall. And also the Disney Very Merry Time sailings are offered during the winter time. So you can come and enjoy the Disney Wish any time of year with extra magic through those themed sailings. Yeah, keep an eye on the Disney Cruise Line website and find that sailing that's just gonna call to you. Just get you here and experience everything we've been talking about. So great. Well, now, we've covered so much, but I feel like we need to go a little bit more into the details. So I got to talk with one of the Walt Disney Imagineers about some of the amazing things that come to life here on the Disney Wish. Go ahead and check that out.
Mr. Danny Hankey. It is so great to have you here with us as part of the podcast. Oh, happy to be here. Oh my goodness. Now, let me get this straight. You're the Senior Creative Director at Walt Disney Imagineering. That's correct. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I love that title. So basically, you're going to tell us all things cool and unique about the Disney Wish today. Are you up for a little talk? Oh, absolutely. It's a beautiful day outside. Let's let's do it. Yes, let's do it. Okay. First question I have for you. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about you and your role? <laughs> yeah. So I started this project five years ago uh, when the wish was nothing but just um, just little line drawings on a piece of paper. And my job as the creative director is to kind of come up with the ideas of what makes up all the different components of the wish. So I work with an amazing team of Imagineers and our friends at Disney Cruise Line. And we kind of just throw darts on a board, say, you know, what if we did a Star Wars hyperspace lounge? What would that look like? And uh, what is the story? And so we just start at very high level and then we kind of work our way into all those little fine details that make uh, a Disney project Disney. Oh my goodness. That sounds like the coolest job. It's, it's really fun. I gotta admit, yeah, <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, another question for you. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite space aboard the Disney Wish? Ooh, can I give you three? I'll allow it. You'll allow, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, because you have to break it down, right? So yes. for the kids, Disney's Oceaneer Club mm -hmm. is one of my favorites because you can merge yourself in the worlds of Marvel into you know, uh, the world of Star Wars. We have a crazy Walt Disney Imagineering Lab where you can learn what it takes to be an Imagineer. We have a fairy tale hall where you can meet Rapunzel and Anna and Elsa. So the Oceaneer Club is awesome for kids. Number two, um, for adults, uh, Hyperspace Lounge. Star Wars Hyperspace, going to go back to Hyperspace Lounge. Uh, it is the bar that you are looking for. It is um, just a great escape uh, where you can immerse yourself in Star Wars because we have so much Star Wars for the kids in the Oceaneer Club. We wanted a space where adults can enjoy Star Wars as well, but kind of the high end elegant version of Star Wars. Um, and then the third thing uh, for families, the rotational dining, we have three very unique restaurants with a whole new concept on dinner and a show. Worlds of Marvel, we, uh, it's a cinematic dining experience, immersing you uh, into an, uh, a big action pack adventure. And then uh, Arendelle, of course, with uh, amazing uh, uh, kind of a live entertainment with musicians and Anna and Elsa there celebrating uh, the engagement of Anna and Kristoff. And then 1923, which we call your quiet night for families where you can enjoy dinner together in a very elegant kind of setting, re you know, representing all of classic Disney animation. So uh, those three things just make, you know, the Disney wish so unique and special. Yes, I love that. And I love that we can do things together. We're a family of five. So anything yeah. that we can do on the ship together, we've been taking full advantage of that. And I love that you thought of that, which is great. Okay, I got another question for you. Okay. Can you share with us a detail or fun part of the ship guests might overlook? Oh my, there's so many to talk about. <laughs> it is, um, you know, again, we love throwing like little little hidden details and Easter eggs around every project. The, you have to even check, take a look at the carpets. When you're going uh, through our corridors, our general corridors, look down the carpets, you'll see details that tie things back to the motif of enchantment. Oh my gosh. Um, but when I, I'll talk about you know some of the things that I've worked on that we kind of like peppered in. The name of the, the story of the, the World of Marble restaurant is that Ant-Man and Watts were giving a dinner presentation. And Ant-Man put together this, this amazing presentation. He's nervous, he's never done a public speaking engagement before. <laughs> and he thought, what a better way to do a, a presentation on a Disney ship than to have a reference to a Sherman Brothers song. So Miracles from Molecules uh, yes. from Adventure Through Inner Space. It's a attraction from the 1960s and uh, and the tie in from, you know, shrinking and it, it just kind of made sense for Ant-Man. So that's how they came up with that. But it's those fun little details where we can work in like fun little Disney nods and cruise line nods to all of our experiences. There's uh, even an Aquamouse, uh, Chip and Dale, are kind of hiding in every single storyline we have in Aquamouse. Oh uh, they're hitchhiking their way to, to Castaway Key. And so uh, so you have to find them. And a lot of other fun little references, you know. Uh, I'll give you another example. In Arendelle, um, you know, if you have to look closely at every single prop that you see on the shelves as you go around the restaurant, um, there are references to almost every single Frozen film and Frozen short in there. Uh, they, we even have... Um, Elsa's little plushie from uh, from the uh, Olaf's uh, Frozen Adventure uh, special. So this little things that uh, you know we we love guests to find, take pictures of, post them online, uh, and share with each other. Oh my goodness, so many! That's so I haven't seen any of those. So now I have to check the carpet when we're done here. Yeah, <laughs> please do. Yeah, you might find some mice and things in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cinderella okay. Mice. <laughs> All right. 
What are you most excited for guests to experience? Oh my, there's so much mm -hmm. on this ship, right? And it's so hard to narrow down to one thing. Um, yeah, I could say the, the laundry is really nice. So the, you know, the guest laundry, but, yes. but I'll, I'll stick with one of my favorites, which is the Aqua Mouse. So it's our first Disney attraction at sea. Um, what makes it different, you know, is that we are giving guests a show. You're immersing, you're, you're getting in these two seater wraps and immersing yourself into the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse. And we have two new original storylines that alternate on different days of the cruise. One's called Scuba Scramble, where Mickey and Minnie are taking you to see mermaids that look like Donald and Daisy. They're like kind of duck mermaids. <laughs> and then the other storyline is called Swiss Meltdown, where the, the uh, Mickey and Minnie are taking us an alpine climbing excursion, but then the sun comes out and starts melting all the snow. And then what happens underwater and with snow melting, it, you get blasted with water, right? So there's water effects, lighting, and uh, music, a beautiful music uh, by the composer Christopher Willis, who composed Runaway Railway and all the shorts. And uh, it's just fun and uh, a lot of energy. And when you get to the top of the hill, then it is a mad dash water kind of it's thrilling ride. Have you, have you ridden it? Yes, I have. And now I know I have to ride it again. So that way I can experience both parts yeah, of the, okay. Both storylines, yeah, on different days. And then all the Easter eggs that we, of course, hid in there as well. Oh so, my goodness, yeah. yes. It is such a fun ride. Both of my little ones, my seven and my 11 year old, loved it. I got to ride with them. So that's something that guests are definitely gonna have to experience. And I love that you love it so much. Oh, I do, yeah. Ride it at night, it is, it's a whole different experience with all the night lighting on the ship. You get to, you know, cause there's moments where you are in acrylic. So you see outside the tube and you can see how beautiful the ship is at night and there's some dark moments and it's, it's a blast at night as well. Okay, so many good tips in that one question. I love it. <laughs> Danny, thank you so much for being here today. You're We're welcome. so glad that you came by and gave us some more tips. And we're excited to experience a Disney Wish. Great, great to have you on board. Thank you. Welcome back, panelists. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, you guys gave us so much information, but I think that before we go, we need to do a lightning round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I need the very first answer that pops into your head. You ready for this? Ready. As ever. Let's go in alphabetical order. So, Adriana, you're first. Okay. All right. Ready, set, go. Which rotational dining restaurant is your favorite? Arendelle. Arendelle. Oh gosh, good answer. What is your favorite space on the new Disney Wish? The Bayou. Toy Story Splash Zone. Mm. What was unexpected? All the details everywhere just blew me away. How when you come down a dark hallway and then open up to a really bright, exciting thing all over the ship. Oh, oh okay. What did you not get to experience that is on your list for next time. Paulo Steakhouse Brunch, we're doing that next time for sure. <laughs> Enchante. Okay. Any last tips or not to misses about the Disney wish to share with our listeners? Don't miss, seize the adventure on the first night of your voyage. And also don't feel like you have to try to see everything. Take it in, you're on vacation, relax, enjoy all the things that you can get to. Don't miss 24 hour complimentary room service. That's literally, what more can I say? Yes. Mickey Bar at midnight, 100%. You got Perfect. it. All right. All good answers. Oh, my goodness. Thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Plan Disney Podcast. Be sure to check out a new episode every third Wednesday of the month. And if you're enjoying the podcast, be sure to leave us a review. In the meantime, if you want to catch up on more Disney planning tips and insights, be sure to follow Plan Disney Panel over on Instagram and Plan Disney over on Twitter. If you have a question of your own, hop on over to PlanDisney.com to ask it. The panelists will be happy to help you. And to keep up on the latest news, go ahead and stop over at Disney Parks blog. Now, I want to thank our panelists so much for being here thank and for so all of for your great us. information. Thank you. And a big thank you to our sponsor, State Farm. Now, when you catch up with us on the next episode, it will be Good Neighbor Month. And during that episode, we're going to talk about how Disney cast and crew are being good world neighbors, how guests can actually witness that and be participants of it on their next trip to a Disney destination. But we just may have a very special bonus episode for you before then. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. We'll see you real soon.